You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Excited you can join me here today on our first Cabral host call of the weekend. Really looking forward to getting into our community's questions. I think we've been doing pretty well catching back up, but also a lot of people really engaging at cabralsupportgroup.com, our free Facebook group. So really exciting to see. I am finishing up this week on my own Dr. Cabral detox. So uh, it really, it's been a great week. I, of course, do my own seven-day detox every season, like I preach about every 12 weeks. Sometimes it's 11, sometimes it's 13 or 14, but it's always seasonally. It's always around the 12-week mark. And this week, I don't know what it was, but I really feel like... Now, it could be the nice weather, that's for one, but I really think the reason that I've been feeling so great is that we did it this time as a true community, meaning that people from all of the United States, all over... Canada, the UK, Australia, anybody that was completing the Dr. Ball Detox, we were getting like 80 comments a day in the Facebook group, really people sharing what they were going through, saying if they were hungry or not hungry, how they were feeling, the weight loss, the drop in inflammation, sleeping better, you name it. And so that was so exciting to see. I really believe that it was doing it as a community. And it was knowing that other people, hundreds of other people around the world right now are going through the same thing as you. And that's one of the powerful things, I think, about community. And and that's why if you don't feel like you have the social circle of friends or family or whatever it might be, you know, it's so nice. Can you find a group of people locally that are into the same things as you? You know, like, do you go to a gym and can you meet someone or some people that, hey, you know, you can meet every day at the gym at this time or whatever it is to stick with that commitment that you made, right? A lot of people who like to shop locally or at farmer's markets. Can you meet some of those people? Are there meetup groups? That would be amazing to think about. But at the same time, at Cabral Support Group, it's an online community of people that from all over the world, you don't live anywhere near each other potentially, but you're able to connect. You're able to share what you're going through, the good, the bad, whatever it is. And you're looking at other people saying, you know what? I know where you're at. I was there last year, two years ago or last week. Here's how I got through it. Here's what I did. It may work for you or it may not, but I want you to know that you're not alone. And if anything really has come out of what we're trying to do online, I mean, it might be this, it wasn't even on purpose. Like we set up a free Facebook group. And the reason we did that, it was originally going to be paid to be able to answer people's questions. And then we saw all these questions coming in and we're booked out in advance with appointments. And we're like, well, why are we going to charge when people need access to this information? And it's something that we love talking about anyways. Like, let's just do this, you know, for the world, like for the greater good of people in general. And that's how we looked at it. So it's not just me, you know, I pop in there every day or every couple of days and I'm answering questions, but we have Caitlin and Laura and Mark and Julia and Michelle and all these amazing health coaches answering your questions as well. So I can't say enough great things about my team and you know what they're looking to do for others as well. So only look forward to seeing this continue and grow because we're really just at the beginning. I mean, we really are. I talk about this all the time. And I won't take up too much time from our questions here, but you know, it's like we deal with the frustration of our fulfillment house and we want to get orders out the next day. And they, for whatever reason, sometimes might wait another day to ship them out. And then people are asking what their order is. Like we get all that. We're like always trying to push and push and get better and better. And I'm telling you right now, we are at just at the beginning. I honestly believe that I really believe this and not from an ego perspective that within a year, We will set the standard, I believe, for what an online virtual functional medicine practice should look like. And I say that without ego. And the reason is that we've done everything wrong. Like, I mean, the reason is like we're doing it, but that's how it's always done. What we need to do is recreate new ways. They just haven't been done yet. So we're on the like the forefront of saying, like, how do you get people labs? How do you get them to Australia? And we're, I mean, to my knowledge, 
we're one of the only people that ships functional medicine lab tests. We even ship our stool tests. We ship everything now to Australia. I don't know of anyone else that does that. We get them back. I meet with my team three times a week, my health coaches, to go over all of your labs that you might be getting at equilibriumnutrition.com, like anything from the organic acids or the food test or the omega-3 or the Dr. Ball Big Five, like any of those. I read them over. We go over the results with the health coaches. They get the plan and then they set up calls with you. I mean, this is really, I believe, cutting edge. And we get to meet with you as if you're like in our office. We literally sit there over Skype. I mean, it's as close as you can get to really being in office. I think it's remarkable. I wish I had access to that even 10 years ago. I mean, really, you know, when I'm over there doing internships, how great would it have been to be able to do all of these different things with all of these great doctors? Now, was Skype available 10 years ago? Yes, because I can remember Skype being my wife. But, you know, it's just it was not the same. Stick with us. I'm telling you, we're going to keep pushing the envelope. We're going to keep doing our best. We want your feedback. We appreciate it. And again, any tips for what you'd like to see in the future? Sometimes we can't do it right away, but we will get to it in the future. There's so many amazing things. Like I want to talk about all of them right now, like the the new specific bars we're creating, uh, one of the the first of their kind, so that they're a great mid-afternoon bar for snacking or on the go. They're going to be school safe. Like Just some great, great things that we're working on. And and, uh, a lot of them are based on your feedback. So I know I went on a little tangent there. It wasn't planned. That is the story of my life. Let's get back on track. All right. First question today is from Brody. Brody is asking, I thoroughly enjoy listening to your podcast and really appreciate the knowledge you share. I'm traveling to India for approximately one month this year. I don't want to fall sick while over there. I would like to know what I can do and what would be suitable for me to take so that I don't get any illnesses. I look forward to hearing your suggestions. I would prefer to use natural products than conventional ones. I'm just unsure what to bring. Thank you. Okay. So great question. You know, I I studied in China and I studied in India and Sri Lanka and I studied in Europe and then I studied in the US. And what I did was, because especially when I was in India and Sri Lanka as well, but what I did was I brought things to purify water. So that was the most important thing. So what I did was I always checked, what am I getting from my water source? Can I get bottled water? And if I could get bottled water, I did that all the time. There was two specific locations now that I'm thinking about it. And they used boiled water only. I didn't know how well they were boiling that water. So what I did was this. I put chlorine tablets. I don't recommend this for everyone's use. But I wanted to kill everything in the water. Of course, chlorine is not good to be ingesting. That's why I talk against tap water. But what I did was I put them in the water. I let them dissolve. And I let them sit there for like six hours. It was an open air container. And then all the basically chlorine, a lot of the chlorine at least would dissipate out. Now, this is last resort. You can also use iodine drops to purify your water. This was a feel safe for me. I had to do it because I didn't want GRD. I didn't want parasites. Because if I got sick, I couldn't complete my internship. I was over there for knowledge, but I was also over there because I had to complete just under 2,500 hours of internship hours. I did not want that to be a wasted trip. So it was really important. What else did I do? Well, I did a lot of things on my adult immune protocol. Of course, I upped my vitamin C, but I also brought with me oregano oil and I brought the Nutribiotic drops, which are the citricidal drops. I will link up the citricidal drops on the website. Other things that I did as well was I brought um, some colloidal silver, which is great as well in water or just consumed however you want. Good on cuts, good on whatever it might be. So a couple of things that you could do now that wasn't around a decade ago. You could buy something called a life straw, L-I-F-E-S-T-R-A-W, life straw. That will allow you to literally drink out of pond water, whatever, and stay safe. So check out the research, okay? They make a thermos, which means you can just fill up the water and you can drink it right through the thermos instead of just using the straw. Super easy to do. I'm going to link up Life Straw today as well. I think it's really a a brilliant product that's made for people overseas that might not have access to clean drinking water. And I'll link up the oregano. I'll link up the citricidal drops. And I believe me, I did use those when I was over there. And then the other big thing that I did is I took my digestive enzymes, the daily digestive enzyme, and I used betaine HCL. And I used betaine HCL, especially with any protein meal, to increase the heat in my stomach to kill all sorts of bacteria and parasites before they could enter my digestive tract. So that's exactly what I did. And hopefully that helps. All right. Aaron's up next. Is it okay to mix the greens powder and the daily nutritional support shake in the morning or should I drink them separately? Thank you. 
Okay, Aaron, great question. And yeah, this gets asked quite a bit. They're both totally fine to take together. All of our supplements are basically, um, you can take them all together. Like there's no issue. There's no contraindication with them. So now our Candida protocol is very specific, meaning some things are taken upon waking, some with breakfast, but none of them would harm you to take them together. I take mine of my greens a lot of times upon waking because I don't like just regular water. I like the greens. It feels good to put in my system. And I also do the sea salt and lime in there as well. So that is my daily fruit and vegetable blend that we're talking about. And I oftentimes do that with a little raw honey or raw manuka honey as well. And again, I'm using like a half a teaspoon, just a tiny bit. I mix that right up in there. Just depends on how I'm feeling that day, that morning. And absolutely delicious. And then I do my smoothie about an hour later. I do my my wake up somewhere around 5.30 or so. And then I do my smoothie right around 7 a.m. That's how I do it. But for my girls, I also mix the greens right into their shake because they're not going to drink the greens powder on their own typically. And so I just make it for them like that. So Aaron, hopefully that answers your question. Lauren's up next. Hi, Dr. Ball. I was excited to hear you on your podcast. I loved hearing you speak about functional medicine and chronic illnesses, both the physical and the mental. I have a question about my younger sister and hoping you could provide some insight. She's a competitive gymnast and 15 years old. Over the past year, she's intermittently complained of shortness of breath. After Christmas, she did get a cold, followed by influenza, sinus infection, and hand, foot, and mouth. She was also on antibiotics for her sinus infection. My mom had taken her down to Rush in Chicago for testing and for an exercise challenge last week. It confirmed she had asthma. She is waiting on the results from an IgE preliminary test. She's put on an inhaler. We feel like it's a Band-Aid approach and wondering what is going on. All right, great. So, and this person, Lauren, put no need to share in the podcast, but I'm going to share anyways. She's a small animal vet and starting her journey into a more holistic approach and holistic practice, looking at the root causes for animals as well. That's absolutely amazing, Lauren. Thank you so much for writing in. And just keep in mind today that uh, we will be putting all these questions in full in the show notes. I'll get you the link in just a moment. But to answer Lauren's question, you have to understand that we're looking at, first we look at the person, right? So we're looking at, wow, this person got the flu, they have a sinus infection and hand, foot, and mouth. Why is their immune system so compromised? That's what I would ask first. I don't know the person, but that would be my first question. Like, she's 15. Her immune system should be robust, well on her way to the strongest immune system, really, time of her life. So what's going on? Well, the deal is, She's probably incredibly stressed, not sleeping a lot, and exercising a lot as a competitive gymnast, okay? So she's becoming too depleted and too catabolic, which means she's lowering her immune system. And remember, the immune system, especially secretory IgA, gets worn down and really shut off during higher times of cortisol. So I believe your sister should run a thyroid adrenal hormone lab, and I would also have her run an organic acids test. If I could recommend one more, it would be the hair tissue mineral analysis. Okay, they're all great, right? They're all great. I would do the big five and I would do the stool test, yes. But I'm giving you them in order of importance because I know, obviously, that not everyone is able to order all of those lab tests that I recommend. So that would be the order of importance. And remember, a lot of people with asthma have a uh, imbalance in electrolytes, okay? Oftentimes a depletion of calcium, believe it or not, because calcium helps you get into that sympathetic nervous system, which helps with decreasing inflammation in the short term. So you have to keep in mind that. But also lower levels of cortisol can be a culprit in allergies and asthma. And that's one of the reasons why when you take allergy medication or you take an inhaler, you're getting a rush of epinephrine, norepinephrine, that's increasing arterial constriction, decreasing inflammation because it's putting you in the fight or flight. And when your body gets worn out, sometimes it literally does not allow itself to get into that fight or flight because it's been burned out. That's where it comes from. So we would look at that with the thyroid hormone adrenal. And the other thing I would look at is gut-based function. Maybe it has nothing to do with the stress that I just talked about. Maybe the stress is actually coming from gut-based discomfort and issues where her every time she eats, she's spilling proteins into her bloodstream, causing an immune-based reaction, causing inflammation, which is slowly wearing down her body. And that's why I recommended the organic acids test. So that's going to get you started, Lauren. That is absolutely the first place to look for your sister. And as always, thank you for looking out for your sister. All right, Nancy's up next. Nancy is asking, firstly, I'd like to say thank you for all of your excellent advice and nutritional supplements, both of which have helped me dramatically improve my overall health and wellness and energy levels in just a few short months. My question is regarding the prophylactic use of antibiotics post-surgery. I'm scheduled for gum graft therapy in a few months, 
And I know my periodontist will prescribe some antibiotics afterwards to fight infection. I was prescribed amoxicillin after my previous gum graft and had horrible side effects. It lasted a month and lots of digestive issues. So I'd really like to avoid taking antibiotics again, especially now that I've done the Dr. Ball detox and I'm feeling much better. I'm wondering if I start taking extra nutritional supplements such as high dose of C, D, and zinc in advance of the surgery, and afterwards, would it be sufficient to minimize the risk of injury or infection? If so, what would be the recommended dosage? And would you suggest any other supplements as well? Overall, I'm quite healthy, don't use any medications, and rarely get sick. I think my immune system is decent already. I follow mainly plant-based diet, taking your daily nutritional support powder and daily fruit and vegetable blends, along with immune-boosting mushrooms like chaga and lion's mane. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Kind regards, Nancy. All right, Nancy, great question. And I personally, you know my stance is I don't use antibiotics unless it's a life-saving condition. So prophylactic use of antibiotics, in my standpoint, again, this is just for me. I can't give you this recommendation to do this over a podcast or in life in general, right? So conventional medicine has to tell you to take it because they'd be liable if you got an infection and they didn't give you the antibiotics. And from a naturopathic perspective, I'm trying to not destroy your gut microbiome by giving you antibiotics. But I also understand that infection is a possibility. So just like you said, what I'm doing is this. Like, just I'm saying, I'm in your position. What would I do? And then you could take and infer whatever you would like from that answer. Hopefully this helps. Okay. What I would do is exactly what you spoke about. I'm increasing my vitamin C, okay, the week before. I'm doing essentially the whole adult immune protocol. I'm increasing my echinacea. I'll link all this up for you. I'm increasing my other immune boosters, such as the balance sink, like you just spoke about. Okay, what else am I doing, though? Once I have this, the day before the surgery, and for about a week after the surgery, I'm doing this. I'm taking oregano oil, all right? I'm taking the citricidal drops, and I'm using the high doses of vitamin C. I'm going to increase my dose of vitamin C, all right? I'm going to make sure that I'm using vitamin D with at least 5,000 IUs per day. That's what I'm doing. The only other additional thing I'm doing is using the colloidal silver spray in my mouth on the point of where I had the surgery. And that colloidal silver will be antimicrobial. I'm also doing some very gentle sesame oil pulling in my mouth. And if you don't know what sesame oil pulling, or if you don't know what oil pulling is, just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts and learn about the Ayurvedic method of oil pulling. Just type in oil pulling at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. Okay. Now, if you do the antibiotics, understand, totally support you in that way. You're going to do 30 days to 90 days of the clean gut probiotic plus the healthy gut support. Okay. Anywhere from 30 days to 90 days, your decision, obviously longer the better, but 30 days should be sufficient after you take antibiotics. So that's what I would do. That's what I've recommended. I have quite a number of friends that have had dental surgery and recommended the exact same protocol because with them, I'm recommended as their friend not their doctor. So it's different from a liability standpoint. But that's exactly what we all did. I haven't had surgery on my mouth in, I can't even tell you how long, probably my early 20s. So I don't have that experience lately, but that is exactly what I would do. Immune boosters, but certainly the citricidal drops, oregano oil, high vitamin C, balanced zinc, and the vitamin D as well, plus the daily nutritional support powder. So hopefully that helps. And I think you have your answer right there. All right. Katie's up next. Longer question from Katie. So I'm going to give you the synopsis and then we're going to uh, pull up today's show notes number for you to link up with that. All right, Katie writes in, I'm a fairly new listener to your podcast and I found it to be extremely educational and helpful in my journey to improve my health. I was diagnosed about four years ago with triangular alopecia after taking antibiotics, taking birth control, taking a lot of antibiotics, had a biopsy done and showed a female pattern of hair loss and dermatologists just could not make any sense of it because of my age and hair loss. Treatment with a lot of different creams and pharmaceutical drugs. The the tests that I took showed normal levels for thyroid, but very low estrogen, very low progesterone, and testosterone, but higher levels of cortisol, deficient in B12, and deficient in vitamin D. The results confirm all my symptoms. I was recommended to take the Active B complex, vitamin D, multivitamin, B12, progesterone cream, and testosterone cream. Have you ever connected these imbalances to alopecia and used this treatment regimen? I'm excited to have answers and alternative treatment to conventional medicine, but worried about further damaging my body. Sorry for the lengthy question. Thank you for all your hard work and compassion towards helping people. All right, Katie, you are, I mean, I'm glad you have all this testing done. This is exactly what I recommend. This is what I obviously want to look at. The problem is 
nothing that you said in your treatment protocol does anything to address the main causes of alopecia. Now, to find the main cause of alopecia, I'm not going to go through the whole thing today. Simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. I know you're a new listener, but this will help. Type in alopecia at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast. You'll figure out exactly. It doesn't matter if you have alopecia totalis. It doesn't matter if you have triangular alopecia. It doesn't matter what type of alopecia you have. You're looking at the main symptoms being some type of gut permeability a lot of the time. Candida overgrowth is a big one, okay, a huge one. But also, you're looking at high level of stress. I can tell you this. In 9 out of 10 cases of alopecia, and I would really argue to say 10 out of 10, there was a major stressor that led to the first initial trigger. Remember, in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect, I talk about this. There are three triggers for anything. The genetic susceptibility, okay? But that doesn't really matter until you get these next two. The environment, the leaky gut or the antibiotic use, and whatever the environment was, the heavy metals, those types of things, and then the triggering event. And a lot of times it's a very stressful-based event. So regardless, this is where you're at today. What you did not figure out, and again, it looks like you went to a bioidentical functional medicine medical doctor. The problem I have with medical doctors, I don't have any problems with medical doctors, but the problem I have with that type of functional medicine is that you're jumping right away to hormones. Like you're just right away. And the problem is, you're good, you're using your B12, you're look, using your B vitamins, your multi and your D. Okay, great. But what are you doing to address the high levels of cortisol? Because unless you address the high levels of cortisol, the alopecia is not going to be corrected. There's no way. Like that's the most important symptom. And you've skipped over, not you personally, I'm not coming down on you, of course, but your doctors have skipped over the most important symptom. And the second most important symptom, which is what does your gut look like? Like what is going on that you're having this autoimmune-based symptom where your hair is being targeted as a protein for some type of cellular destruction? So what I would do for you is run the organic acids test. I would run the stool test if you're able to. I would run the hair tissue mineral analysis. You already know you have the high levels of cortisol, so you would then send that over to my team and they would add it to your labs to go over for our review and then we would give you our specific recommendations, okay? If you don't want our specific recommendations, I understand, but hopefully that high cortisol and gut permeability-based issue was a, a true step in the right direction, okay? Thank you so much for writing in. Let's do one more question today. Maya or Mia is writing in, Hi, Dr. Brawl. My name is Maya and I'm 27 years old. I've struggled with eating issues for 10 years and five years for bulimia, five years for binge eating disorder. Any tips on how to manage that and control my mind? Also became a carrier of tuberculosis when I was 13. I feel like I'm always tired, even though I get good sleep. Would you think that antibiotic contributes to my fatigue and also have hormonal acne in my back, neck, jawline, chin? What tests would you recommend for me? All right, so this is a great question. I did answer this type of question specifically last week on the house call. So I would love for you to go back and tune into last week Cabral house call. I'll get you that link in just a moment as well. But what I'm recommending is, is this. I'm always recommending anytime we have an eating-based disorder is looking at the biochemical issues that can go wrong in the body for why someone may be more prone to an eating-based disorder. And a lot of times those are imbalances, imbalances, first of all, with neurotransmitters, okay? So we can look at that on an organic acids test. We can look at the serotonin, dopamine, and we can look at the um, norepinephrine. But then we also look at the B vitamins on the organic acids test. And by looking at the organic acid test and B vitamins, we can look at, is this person best able to adapt to stress? The next thing we look at on that organic acids test is candida overgrowth or maybe some C. dip. And the reason we're looking at that is we're saying, is this person spilling proteins or yeast or other waste into their bloodstream, which is then also causing some type of aggregation inflammation to the brain as well, or sending signals from the gut to the brain that something's wrong. I also love running a thyroid adrenal hormone test because if you're lower in thyroid, you're going to be in more of a lower mood. That's also why I run the hair tissue mineral analysis. Because if you're lower in electrolytes, like a four low pattern, you're going to be zapped of energy. And a lot of times you can be lower mood, which can then lead to improper relationships, obviously, with food. Other things we look at is blood sugar dysregulation. So the lab tests look at the biochemical is what I'm saying. And then if you listen to last week, so I'm going to give you those links right now. is episode 869 and episode 870, okay? So steamcabral.com forward slash podcast, and you can check those out. Or go right to 869 or 870. And of course, it's always just my name and then forward slash 869 forward slash 870 because I believe I put in there binge eating or bulimia. 
So something to check out right there as well. And then on that same podcast, just to let you know, I also recommended, I believe that it's amazing to be working with a health coach, life coach, or therapist at the same time. So one, you're working with a functional medicine practitioner who's going to be able to rebalance your body from the inside out. And the second part is someone that's also going to work with the mind. So the body and the mind work together. A functional medicine practitioner is going to help you get the body fixed. And then a a therapist or life coach or anyone that might specialize in both is going to be there for you on a weekly basis. I really like weekly check-ins, okay? Not longer than that. That's why a lot of people at our studio in Boston, you know, we do personal training there at one of the studios as well, is they meet once a week or twice a week or maybe even three times a week. And the reason is that they have an accountability coach, but they also have someone to talk with. That a lot of times in life, we just don't have a friend or family member to chat with. And I just think it's so powerful to be able to connect with another human being. Even if you're hiring them as a coach, a doctor, whatever it is, it's just like, you know that that person cares about your well-being. And a lot of times it's what we need to be able to take ourselves to the next level. What I needed was my mentor to believe in me. I had a lot of doctors, never fully got well, but it was my mentor who just said, Steve, I believe in you. Like I believe in you. Not only do I believe you can get well, I believe that you will go on one day and teach others. To this day, that still gets to me. Like I still feel emotional right now of recounting that to you. And I've told that story hundreds of times. But it was a belief in me that I just wasn't getting anywhere else, that I just wasn't feeling that in my life. And here I was with a stranger, essentially, you know, my mentor, telling me, I believe in you. I believe you will get well. I believe that once you get well, you will share this information with others and you will go on to be a great practitioner in your own right. And I don't know what it was. Like, I don't know what it was about her words, but I can remember sitting there across from her being all choked up when she was saying that. And it wasn't crazy words. It was just, I wasn't getting that. I wasn't feeling that. And it made, it increased my self-worth, right? I don't think that my self-worth, my self-identity was maybe that strong. I couldn't get myself well. I think that was a big shock to my system. But, and I was able to help others, but I couldn't help myself. You know, she's over here believing in me. And a lot of times it's very powerful medicine. So work with someone on the, on the chemical level, organic acids test, thyroid, hormo- thyroid adrenal hormone, hair tissue mineral analysis. If you can only run one, you'll run that organic acids test, right? Now, if you're working with a life coach though, or maybe they're the same person or a therapist, then you can also get it from both sides. But you don't need to do that forever. But for a period of six weeks or 12 weeks, It can absolutely be remarkable. So Maya, I hope that you get the help that you deserve because you do deserve it. And just keep in mind, we all go through our struggles. We all go through our trials and tribulations. This is yours. Own it. There's nothing wrong with it at all. Remember, like you can overcome this. You will overcome it. It looks like you're already getting there. You're well on your way. So I congratulate you with that. And just remember that this is a journey that we're all on. You know, it really is. We never reach perfection, but what we can do is we just can just keep pushing forward each and every day. And that's the beautiful thing is that we get to always further our practice. Thank you everyone for tuning into this Cabral house call. Clearly I'm losing my voice. I'm going to rest it. I'm going to come back tomorrow for part two of our weekend Cabral house calls. Take care. Enjoy your weekend. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you. And I mean that I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.